So this is what video looks like coming out of the Sony A5100's HDMI port. Um, you'll actually get a better video quality streaming out the HDMI than you will recording into the camera because, first of all, uh, you're bypassing the camera's codec, so there's no compression artifacts or you know, motion compression things or anything like that. Uh, and, you're not, and you're actually getting more color resolution because it's a 422 color compression instead of 420. There's just one problem. Um, if you notice the, you know, move my hat a little bit so you can see, if you notice the detail on my forehead and my cheeks, I'm looking up in the monitor over here just to see if it's doing it now, it looks like, it's, looks like it is, um, you'll notice that they look like they're kind of uh, waxy, they're very smoothed out, uh, almost artificially, and um, if you want to see, I can demonstrate this better by covering one of my eyes, and um, you'll notice now actually that my cheeks and my forehead have more detail in there than there was before. This is actually how my face is supposed to look. Now, if I move my hand away and give it a couple of seconds, you'll actually notice that it will... There it goes. Yep, I see it in the monitor. Okay, yeah, my face has been smoothed out. Now I look like I'm made out of wax again. Um, what you're actually seeing is a feature in the camera called skin smoothing. This is actually a, an option in Sony's menu which you can toggle on and off. I think by default it's off. In almost any photography mode, you can go in and you can toggle it. Um, However, if you flip the mode dial over to, um, to movie mode, the video mode, you'll notice that the toggle is grayed out, it's disabled. So you think, okay, great, that must mean that it doesn't come on when you're recording movies, right? But the thing is that I'm in movie mode right now. In fact, if you're ever going to use the HDMI out feature, you really want to be in movie mode because when you're in the photography modes, it doesn't do as clean of a resample off of the sensor and you don't get any audio or anything like that. So really the camera's supposed to be in movie mode when you're doing this. And if you're in movie mode and skin smoothing is disabled, you should never have a problem. But yet, here we are, I'm in movie mode and I'm having this problem. Johnny over at Cinema 5D noticed this in his review of the Sony cameras. And uh, he reached out to Sony. Sony's response that it's actually tied to face detection. In other words, what they were trying to say is that the toggle being disabled in the menu doesn't mean that the feature is disabled, it just means that the toggle is disabled. The camera is going to decide on its own whether it wants to turn it on and off. And as you can see right now, it's on and I have no way to turn it off. Uh, what, what Sony says to do uh, is to just turn off face detection, which is another option in the menu. With face detection off, uh, the skin smoothing will stay off as well. That's kind of annoying. I don't, I don't know why that would be the case because in every other mode on the camera, Face detection and skin smoothing are two separate options. So why only in movie mode would they be tied together? It doesn't really make any sense to me. But let's just say, for argument's sake, that that is what they did and it was intentional. And the only way, you know, we can remove this by turning off face detection. That would be great. Problem is, face detection is off right now too. Face detection is off, skin smoothing is disabled, and it's still happening. Apparently, face detection off will work if you press the record button in the camera. It doesn't work if you're just streaming externally to another device. When the camera is recording, it respects your setting to have face detection off and the bug goes away and your skin looks normal again. But as long as the camera isn't internally recording and you're just feeding an external device or putting it up on a big screen or you know, streaming to the internet with a streaming box, who knows, whatever you want to do with that HDMI out, if you're not also recording into the camera body, this is what's going to happen. And there's no combination of those settings that seems to keep it off. John Moore has a YouTube video demonstrating this problem with his A6000 and his suggested solution is to just press the record button on the camera while you have the HDMI device connected and you'll get your higher quality video with the uh, 422 color and better compression and whatever and the camera will also be recording its own backup copy in, in, in camera. There's a couple of reasons why this isn't really a solution. Uh, number one, all these Sony cameras aside from the A7S for different reasons will overheat um, they're not designed really for heat dissipation. Uh, the A5100, which is the one that I'm using here, is actually one of the biggest offenders because it's such a small body, there's nowhere for the heat to go. So um, when you press the record button and it records internally, after about 10 to 15 minutes, the camera will actually shut down, not just stop recording, shut down so that it can cool off before you can continue. That means anything connected to the HDMI port is also going to suddenly lose its feed without warning. That's not really going to work for these situations. Uh, it's funny because if you Google how to get around Sony A5100 overheating, the solution is plug it into an external recorder. Because then, no joke, you can hook this up to an external device, let it stream for, I did an hour and a half on a single battery, no overheating, constantly. It was great. 
um, you know, I would love to be able to use the camera like this. I have an Atomos Ninja, I'll hook it up like that, leave it as a B camera off to the side for an event or a speech or whatever, or let it feed up to a, uh, you know, a presentation device, a big screen or something, and it's just a great little, you know, unobtrusive camera to do that with. But then we're going to deal with the waxy face thing. Okay, so how do you get around that? Press record in the camera. Now we're back around in circles again. This is not a solution. There has to be a way to make this go away. Even if the camera didn't overheat and pressing the record button in the camera were a solution to make this bug go away, it would only last for 30 minutes at a time. That means if you're streaming, you know, a graduation speech or something, and, uh, and you know, every 30 minutes, the guy's face is gonna turn to wax unless you go over there and physically press that button again. And the most annoying thing about this is that it's not just the A5100. This was actually on the A6000. It's also, it was originally on the A7S. In fact, uh, Philip Bloom and uh, Dave Dugdale tested out the A7S with an external 4K recorder when it first came out because that was one of the big features of it. And uh, they both noticed this bug that the skin would sometimes turn waxy when the camera recognized the face. Um, I'm happy to say now that on my current A7S, which I believe is a later firmware than the one that they tried, I'm able to turn off um, face detection and I'm able to keep the skin looking the way it's supposed to. So that's good news. Uh, that means that they can fix it and they have fixed it uh, on other cameras, but they didn't fix it on any of their APS-C sized cameras. The A6000 and the A5100 still do this. So really what we need is for Sony to release a bug fix for these cameras in the same way that they did for the A7S. Um, you know, if skin smoothing and face detection are supposed to be tied together, which again seems weird to me, but if that's how it's supposed to be, then at least, at least let us keep face detection off because that's not working either. So, okay, until Sony does something about this, and hopefully they will, uh, there is a workaround that I found. It's not ideal, but if you find yourself in the situation and you want to use the camera like this, this does work to keep the waxy skin off, and that is to use clear image zoom. You see, I noticed in the manual that um, the face detection feature of the camera is not available when certain other features are being used. One of those features is any zoom that isn't an optical zoom. Um, so we have digital zoom and we have clear image zoom. A digital zoom we don't really want to use because all a digital zoom does is take the pixels and enlarge them, thereby reducing your effective resolution. Clear image zoom is kind of clever. It seems to take a different portion of the sensor and resample that. So you've got more than enough pixels to resample and not lose any resolution. So that's actually pretty clever. It's a pretty cool feature that these cameras have. Um, and by doing that, the face detection is not able to come back on, and so you can get around the waxy skin problem. I'm gonna demonstrate this for you. Okay, so here we are now at a 1.1 times crop off of the camera sensor. And um, hopefully you'll be able to notice that the detail on my skin is there. Um, it's not smoothing it out, it's not waxing it over, it's, it, this is how it's supposed to look. The catch is that we're, we're now cropping in 1.1 times off of the sensor. So the outer border of our frame is being chopped off. Um, since this camera is already an APS-C sized sensor, uh, which is a 1.5 times crop from a full frame camera, adding this other 1.1 is gonna make it an effective 1.65, um, which isn't terrible. I mean, it's annoying because we shouldn't have to do this at all. But 1.6 is actually what Canon uses on their crop cameras. Their APS-C, everyone else agrees 1.5 is what, you know, Super 35 or APS-C sized frame should be. For whatever reason, Canon considers it 1.6. So if, you, if you've been coming from a, a 7D or a Canon Rebel and shooting video with one of those, uh, this should be very, very close to the field of view that you're used to. So it's not terrible, but it's still annoying that, that this is even something we'd have to deal with. Uh, Sony really needs to fix this. So that's that. Um, I hope you found this informative, and if not, I hope it was at least interesting. See you guys next time.